morning students we will start with the indian parliament okay so classes includes first we will finish the indian parliament that means union legislature then it will be followed with the union executive then it will be followed with the union judiciary then central state relations after then amendment of the constitution local government and constitutional non constitutional bodies so this is the flow topics we are going to discuss first we will discuss about the indian parliament indian parliament comes under the union legislature union legislature this topic is comes under union legislature union legislature can you please open the constitution and refer article 17 to 122 did you get the bare act no okay so from tomorrow onwards try to bring bare act with a class indian constitution bare act okay we'll get it in any stationery shop you will get this indian constitution bare act okay try to have a hard copy because when i say something you have to underline because questions are framing like that according to constitution which of the following are right wrong they are asking in such a manner unless until you have a very good command over the constitution you cannot attempt those kind of questions are we clear yes. okay so bare act by lexicon publications you can have the lexicon publications bare act you can get and you can refer that so today's topic is about the union legislature you know students union legislature it is the details about the union legislature they are present in the indian constitution okay from part 5 onwards union it talks about especially in the indian constitution article 79 to article 122 article 79 to article 122 talks about union legislature okay these are the range of articles whereas article 52 to article 78 it talks about the union executive okay union executive we are not discussing about the union executive now first we will finish off the union legislature then we will follow with the union executive okay because at the end of the day executive is derived from legislature in the parliamentary form of government so obviously first you have to discuss about the legislature then it will be the executive that is a more meaningful way of approaching with the subject now let me explain you know students obviously states okay states state can be in multiple ways don't imagine state is nothing but a state in the india state can be any way anything under article 12 it can be the union or it can be the state or it can be the local government or it can be the public sector undertaking or it can be the judiciary also when the judiciary is performing the administrative function okay so what is what what comes under the state it defined by the supreme court in rd shetty versus airport authority of india in that particular case supreme court clarified about what is the meaning of state okay if you want you can refer that case law also rd shetty versus rd shetty versus airport authority of india airport authority of india in this case law supreme court clarified about what comes under the definition of state okay normally state is nothing but a geographically defined place where people identify themselves with a the common nationality okay state is different from nation always remember okay india is a state okay but it is having lot of national identities state means with a geog with a definite geographical identity and it has to be recognized by international community also for example palestina is not recognized as a state whereas a nation nation means nation means identity among the people for example naga tribes they are having the naga nationalism because they are identifying with a common theme that is naga kalistani nationalism so there there is a possibility of multiple nationality within the state okay if you have a common nationalism like if you are if you everyone is identifying that we are indians then you can call it as india is a nation state because you are having a one nationality but there is a possibility of multiple nationality now in the indian state okay like india we are having majorly three domains we are going to have majorly three domains in the state okay these three domains are obviously legislature okay legislature and executive legislature executive and judiciary and judiciary legislature 
executive and judiciary. These are the three things you have to understand students. The main function of the legislature is obviously making of laws, making of laws, okay. Whereas the executive main function is implementation of the laws. Whereas the judiciary main function is it interpret the laws and it will check whether the laws made, whether the laws made are according to the constitution or not. If they are in violation of constitution, then judiciary declare those laws are ultra virus. That means they are not according to constitution, they will be struck down. With respect to that, so at appropriate time, I will explain about doctrine of severability, doctrine of pith and substance, doctrine of eclipse, various doctrines you have to learn. Okay. Now, legislature. So, mainly legislature deals with the making of laws, making of laws, legislature. Whereas, executive implementing implementation of laws, implementation of laws, implementation of laws, executive. Executive is about implementation of laws. Whereas, judiciary, judiciary, it upholds the rule of law. It makes sure everyone follow the rule of law by interpreting the constitution. Okay, Rule of law will be upheld by the judiciary. As long as the judiciary is independent, the rule of law will be applicable or applied independently. If the judiciary is compromised, then rule of law cannot be implemented in a very fair manner. That means the fairness will be will, will lost. That, that nothing but okay, people won't get the justice. When people won't get the justice, obviously people lost the belief in the institution. They don't believe in the institution. When they don't believe in the institution, obviously they will be attracted to the radical elements. It may be the terrorism or it may be the naxalism. People will be attracted if they don't get justice. Okay, Justice is all about due share of rights as well as duties. What rights are you supposed to get, you should get. If you are deprived of your right which you are supposed to get, then obviously you will lose faith on the system or institution. It may be the family also. For example, in a family, if all sons are not getting or all siblings are not getting the equal share in property, obviously they lose faith in the parents, you know, like they did not do proper justification. It is all about justice. So, justice not only should serve in reality, it is very important that it should appear that justice will get at one point of time. It, even though you are not getting the justice in reality, sometimes the system at least you should give confidence that justice will be served. Okay, because of that is the reason only still so many Indians they are in the believing in the Indian courts. Because even though lot of delay in the Indian judiciary, still Indian judiciary is giving the impression that justice will be served. Okay, that belief has to be maintained by the institution. Now, we are going to focus on the legislature from today's topic onwards. Okay, at least it will take three weeks of the next from today onwards. At least next three weeks it will take the Union legislature. That means Indian Parliament. You know that if you refer the Lakshmi Khan book, you know that Indian Parliament is a very huge topic and its weightage is also very, very high. And you have to know very details about the Indian Parliament. Yesterday, you might have know that the fight between the rule 267 versus rule 176. Did you visit? Have you heard about this? Okay, rule 176 versus rule 263, 267. Even in today's Indian Express also, in the explained section, they covered this. Okay. I thought you covered this, rule 267 versus rule 176. In current affairs, even yesterday I made one video also in English regarding this, rule 267 versus rule 176, it was in news yesterday and day before yesterday also it was in news regarding the Rajya Sabha. Okay. Online students, is it audible, audio and video, please give the confirmation. Now. Are we clear about this? Yes. Now, let us focus on the union legislature. Okay, students. In case if you miss out, miss out anything, you know, like and writing after the class also, just you can take the picture of this. Just we, we can go back and you can take the photo, you can fill that notes. Now, legislature. Already you know the students, the main function of the legislature is making of laws. Legislature. Okay. Making of laws. Tell me students why you need a law, why you need a law. We are saying that legislature is about making of law. Why laws are required 
to maintain order in the society. Okay, anything else? Okay, actually, state, state generally two types: nature state and the civilized. That means civilized state, civilized or order, orderly state. Okay, nature state means anyone can do anything. Okay. and everyone will get everything nature state is nothing but a primitive state where man used to live in caves while life that's a nature state okay nature state is very primitive in nature very primitive in nature whereas civilized one civilized one here individuals will be given rights and if those rights are violated they can go to some institution over the period of time that institution is known as courts judiciary and if someone is doing any mistake the person will be penalized that means everything according to the ordered way this kind of ordered civilization can be ensured or can be possible only by making a law so laws will ensure the civilized society if this laws are not implemented properly then the society will not be in civilized manner and society will go back to the primitive stage okay that is happening now in the afghanistan that is happening now in the afghanistan our understanding if you don't apply apply laws properly that is what now it is happening in the manipur you might have seen okay now you must understand that for orderly society the proper implementation of laws are prerequisites then only society will maintain in order fashion okay next legislature now listen so what is the main difference between the telangana panchayati act as well as nirbhaya act what is the main difference between the telangana panchayati act and the nirbhaya act what is the main difference simple in simple way what is the main difference simple nirbhaya act applicable entire india telangana panchayati act applicable only telangana that means laws can be two types based on the jurisdiction if the laws are applicable entire nation they are known as union laws if laws are applicable only within the state they are known as state laws okay that means based on the jurisdiction we can divide the legislature into two ways we can divide the legislature into two ways based on the jurisdiction one is the union legislature one is the union legislature union legislature and the second one is the state legislature state legislature second one is the state legislature union legislature and state legislature Are you understanding okay union legislature and state legislature now legislature is a law making body state legislature means law making body present in the state level and law making body present in the central level this is the general once you are very good with the general things then you have to think about the exceptions so i am saying that every state will have law making body but sometimes even the uts also will have law making bodies if the ut population is bigger enough while dictating the notes i will tell you which uts are having their own assembly own law making body j and k delhi puducherry these are the three ones that is a exception first you have to be very good with the general you know students in india 28 states are there okay in all the 28 states law making bodies are there but all the 28 states not having their own high courts that means state may have their own high court or not but state should have their law making body because in democracy law making bodies are the highest one are you understanding for example goa they are having their own assembly telangana andhra pradesh they are they are having their own assembly but telangana and andhra pradesh they had a common high court common high court for telangana and andhra pradesh from 2014 till 2019 okay that means law making bodies are the most priority one now based on this law making bodies if this law making bodies listen i will done with this writing okay as initially we are discussing the basics first i'll give a flow of the particular topic then wherever required i will give the dictated notes also that means your notes will consist of running notes which is intercepted by the dictated notes are we clear initially i will explain then i will give the dictated notes 
Don't worry, at least the parliament, you will get around 60 to 70 pages of dictated notes alone. Don't worry. Okay, that one, that one I'll help you out. Now, next topic is continuation to this. Legislature is in central level, state level. Now, again we will classify the legislature into two types. Okay, so we will classify the legislature into two types based on the structure of the legislature. Based on the structure of the legislature. If the legislature is having two houses, if the legislature is having two houses, okay, it is known as bicameral legislature. Bicameral, bicameralism, that legislature is known as. If the legislature is having only one house, one house, okay, that is known as unicameralism, unicameralism, that is known as unicameralism, bicameralism and unicameralism. Are we clear? Bi means two, cameral means house, two houses, unicameral means single house. Now, you have to know that students, now, note, note, Indian parliament is always bicameral in nature, Indian parliament is always bicameral in nature. Indian Parliament is always bicameral in nature. Indian Parliament is always bicameral in nature. Next point. The concept of bicameralism, the concept of bicameralism for the first time introduced right down to, okay, two dots, colon, right down, number one, central level, central level, central level, number one, central level. Okay, write down one by one. Okay, number one, central level, take hyphen. Montague Chemsford reforms, 1919. Montague Chemsford reforms, 1919. Montague Chemsford reforms, 1919. Montague Chemsford reforms, 1919. Second point, state level, take hyphen. Government of India Act, 1935. Next point, state legislatures. Okay, next separate point I'm talking about. State legislatures might be unicameral or bicameral. It depends on the states. It depends on the states. State legislature might be unicameral or bicameral. It depends on the states. Depends on the states. Next point. Following states in India, following states in India, following states in India, following states in India, consists of, following states in India, consists of Bicameral legislature. Following states in India consists of bicameral legislature. Consists of bicameral legislature. Number one, UP. UP. Second one, Bihar. Bihar. Third one, Maharashtra. Maharashtra. Fourth one, Telangana. Fourth one, Telangana. Fifth one, Andhra Pradesh. Fifth one, Andhra Pradesh. Sixth one, tell me, sixth one, Karnataka, right down, Karnataka, Karnataka, sixth one, Karnataka. Now, listen, listening parts. So, now you know that bicameral means two houses, unicameral means one house. Parliament is always, bicameral. parliament is always what? Bicameral. bicameral. State legislature is always unicameral or bicameral. That you have to remember, very, very important. State legislature can be unicameral or bicameral. Now, so I am saying that parliament is always bicameral in nature. Okay. Parliament is always bicameral in nature. I am saying that. That means parliament is always having two houses. Okay. One house is known as Lok Sabha. Lok Sabha. The other house is known as Rajya Sabha. The other house is known as Rajya Sabha, Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha. Okay. How this Lok Sabha will be elected and everything I will explain. First listen, okay, with basics. Lok Sabha, Rajya Sabha, two houses are there. Okay. If a person, okay, he might be member in Lok Sabha or he might be member in Rajya Sabha. We use the common word to denote the members in Lok Sabha, Rajya Sabha. That common word is known as MP, member of parliament. MP means the person might be Lok Sabha member or Rajya Sabha member. Use the word common word MP, member of parliament. Now, 
स्टेट लेजिस्लेचर स्टेट लेजिस्लेचर स्टेट लेजिस्लेचर लाइक ए मैंशन एलियर स्टेट लेजिस्लेचर माइट बी यूनिक कैमरल और इट मे बी बाई कैमरल or or it might be the bicameral bicameral okay just now i told you if the state legislature is unicameral means it is having only one house that house is known as legislative assembly legislative assembly that house is nothing but legislative assembly okay whoever member listen whoever member in legislative assembly those persons are known as what mla member of legislative assembly member of legislative assembly now bicameral bicameral means how many houses two houses bicameral means two houses okay two houses bicameral means one is legislative assembly one is legislative assembly legislative assembly members in pre members present in legislative assembly is known as mla okay the other one is a legislative council legislative council legislative council okay so legislative council member of legislative council nothing but they are called as mlc mlc in india total Six states contain bicameral in the state level. Just now I dictated already. Six states. That means in only six states you will see the MLC. In the rest of the states you don't find the MLC. Can you find MLC in Tamil Nadu? Yes or no? No. Jharkhand? No. Bihar? Yes. yes. Maharashtra? Yes. Kerala? No. Karnataka? Yes. yes. So you must understand. Only six states in India contain both MLA and MLC. in the rest of the states you, you can find only mlas that means state may follow the unicameral or bicameral but whichever the form it may be legislative assembly is mandatory and legislative council is optional can you say like that yes. right up in state legislature in state legislature in state legislature legislative assembly is mandatory in state legislature legislative assembly is mandatory legislative assembly is mandatory whereas legislative council is optional whereas legislative council is optional legislative council is optional next you know students we are discussing about this legislature and i said already what this legislature will do making of laws okay making of laws you know these people are making of laws for whom for people for people obviously okay so these people are making laws for the people okay these representatives okay actually laws laws to people it can be made in two ways people directly will involve or people will elect someone and those someone will make laws for us that means democracy is two types direct democracy indirect democracy direct democracy where people directly involve in making of laws in india we don't follow the direct democracy indirect democracy where people elect their representatives state level as well as in the national level state level their representatives are known as mlas state level people representatives known as mlas whereas national level people representatives they sit in which house lok sabha rajya sabha parliament lok sabha okay first you have to know how on which level people elect their representatives okay let me explain now people representatives in various levels okay then we'll discuss the parliament in detail now i am going to explain about people representatives okay national national level state level and local governments local governments these local governments also
rural and urban urban large urban areas and small urban areas rural areas okay now tell me students how many of you are from rural areas here just raise your hands you are all from rural areas now in the rural area who is your first representative because in democracy people don't involve directly people elect their representative okay in rural area who is your first representative board member okay ward member is your first representative okay so ward member re represents in your ward level okay who will represent you in your village level sarpanch sarpanch will represent you in your village level sarpanch sarpanch okay as you all of you are from telugu states yeah anyone from other than telugu states no all are from telugu states now who is your representative in the mandal level mandal level mptc district level jpts state level who is your representative state level your representative is mla yeah yes or no mla and national level who is your representative mp which mp lok sabha mp or rajya sabha mp that you have to understand this is what i am trying to make out okay lok sabha mp your representative listen carefully okay then you can write afterwards first listen carefully i'll give enough time to write listen this so in the indian democracy at least you will vote for the six people okay how many of you voted at least once in your lifetime one okay very good when you voted either you might have voted with evm or you might have voted on the ballot paper okay how many of you voted on the ballot paper few okay now listen this level of elections this election is generally on ballot paper this election generally will be in the ballot paper and these election general will be on the evms okay you will get that kind of clarity okay one more thing in the next level you will understand these elections generally will be conducted by the election commission of india these election will be conducted by the state election commission that is second fundamental difference that is the reason i'm trying to make out so if you are from rural area you will involve at least in the election of six people okay this four members and your state level and your country level national level for example if you are from very small town in india very small area small town okay if you are from small town obviously okay small town who is your first representative councillor councillor is your first representative in your area level in your town level who is your representative municipal chairman in your town level your representative is municipal chairman state level your representative is obviously mla country level your representative in lok mp sabha. lok sabha mp that means you must observe some general tendency that the names of state level and central level it is not changing the names in the local level it is getting changed it is getting changed i understand we call mandal level whereas in some states like odisha they don't call mandal they call block block level okay different people use different names but in the entire india panchayat raj always in three levels village level intermediate level district level district is same everywhere village is same everywhere but the intermediate level the name varies with the state we call mandal level some state call taluk some states call block different states use different words if you are from large town if you are from the large town then obviously who is your first representative area level who represent your area corporator corporator who represent your town your town level mayor mayor again state level mla and national level mp now listen so all these people are directly elected by the people now listen mlas for example andhra pradesh how many mlas elected by the people 175 that means entire andhra pradesh divided into 175 blocks and each block is elected one mla that means one entire andhra pradesh divided into 175 geographical units 
from each geographical unit, people in that area, they are electing one MLA. Same applies to Telangana. Telangana divided into state level. State level, Telangana divided into 119 geographical units. From the geographical unit, the people who are living in the geographical unit, they, are, they will elect their representative. This geographical unit is nothing but constituency. Nothing but what? Constituency. In state level, in state level, you will observe two types of constituency. One is the MLA constituency, the second one is the MP constituency. By applying some common sense, you can understand that MP constituency is very large compared to the MLA constituency. Generally, group of MLA constituencies together known as MP constituency. On the Pradesh, 175 MLA constituencies grouped under how many MP constituencies? 25. Telangana, 119 grouped under 17. So now you must understand that MP constituency includes certain number of MLA constituency. And what is the meaning of constituency? A geographical unit, within the geographical unit, people will elect their representative. Constituency present in all the levels. Ward is nothing but one constituency. Group of wards together known as MPTC. So constituency is nothing but geographical unit. Why I am emphasizing this much is this constituency in coming days, tomorrow, day for tomorrow, when we are referring Article 82, Delimitation Commission, at that time you will get this word very commonly, Delimitation Commission. Now it is in news also regarding the delimitation in Assam. Have you heard about this? It is in news regarding the delimitation. Delimitation is nothing but changing the boundary of the constituency. You might have known that your constituency might be SC constituency, ST constituency or general constituency. Have you heard about these words? You will get those words. Okay. MLAs. Once you elected the MLAs, these MLAs, they elect MP among themselves. These MLAs, they elect MPs among themselves. Those MPs are nothing but where they will sit? Rajya Sabha. This is what you have to understand. Okay. Rajya Sabha MPs are elected by MLAs. Where well, Lok Sabha MPs are elected by people. Lok Sabha MPs are elected by the people. Now, in democracy, who are the highest in democracy? People. People are the highest in democracy. Now, by, by examining these two houses, Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha, tell me, which house should get more powers? Lok Sabha or Rajya Sabha? Sabha. Why Lok Sabha? <laughs> Members are elected by the people. That is the reason. When you read the polity, no confidence motion can be introduced only in the Lok Sabha. You will get these words, don't worry. First, I am, I am trying to tell you the importance of Lok Sabha. Money bill can be introduced only in the Lok Sabha. Censure motion can be introduced only in the Lok Sabha. Cut motions only in Lok Sabha. Adjournment motion only in Lok Sabha. And government is responsible only to Lok Sabha. That means Lok Sabha, in number of ways, Lok Sabha will get more priority than the Rajya Sabha because Lok Sabha is reflecting the will of the people. Lok Sabha is a true reflection of the democracy. That is the reason Lok Sabha is always having more priority than the Rajya Sabha. That is the fact. And this is what I explained the concept. Why Lok Sabha is more important than, than the Rajya Sabha? Because Lok Sabha members are directly elected by the people. Okay? From tomorrow onwards, please bring the constitution. Because I have to tell you, when I say something, refer the Article 326, you have to refer the Article 326 that every person who is above the 18 years of age, they involve in the election of the Lok Sabha. Okay? They cast their votes. Now, this is the idea national level, state level. In state level, I told you sometimes MLCs also will be there. It depends on the state. How many states are containing MLCs? Six. Six. These MLCs, these MLCs, they are elected by, elected by specific group of people. Specific group of people. Specific group of people. MLCs are elected by specific group of people. Recently in Andhra Pradesh, Graduate elections held. Have you heard about this? Graduate elections conducted in Andhra Pradesh. That means only graduate will involve. Teachers elections conducted in Andhra Pradesh recently. Only teachers involved. So MLCs are not directly elected by all the people. That means council will not reflect the will of the entire population. Council members reflect the will of only particular groups. Whereas assembly will reflect the will of the all the people. So which one should we give more priority in the democracy? Assembly or council? Assembly because assembly members are directly elected by the people. It is reflecting the will of the people. Are we clear about this? Right. After 73rd and 74th amendment, every state has to follow only three types. Village level, intermediate level, 
district level. Okay, you will get that in Article 243C. Check that Article 243C. Refer Article 243C or Article 243B. Either of the two articles, please check. Rest of the people write this. Are you understanding whatever I am saying? Yes. Are you able to catch it? Yes. Very good. Sir, in state level, which is lower and upper house? Okay. So obviously, lower house is always directly elected by the people. So that means which is the lower house? Assembly. Whichever the house is not directly elected by the people, that is known as upper house. That means which one is upper house here? Council. I'll give that nomenclature later. So always first you should know these basics. Then rest of the topics will be very easy. Otherwise, sometimes students who don't know who is this Rajya Sabha member, who is this Lok Sabha member, where they sit and all these things. Tell me where is this national level, where the people will sit? In Hyderabad or Amaravati, where they will sit? Delhi. Delhi. You know that Indian parliament is in Delhi. Recently new parliament, yes, new parliament present in New Delhi. Okay, new parliament inaugurated recently. Isn't it? Okay. Are you able to find which article? 243B. Otherwise, how many levels? Village level, intermediate level and district level. Three levels. So, there is no four levels. Only three levels present in the so local governments according to article 243b before this article different state used to have different levels to bring the uniformity we brought 73rd amendment and 74th amendment 73rd panchayatira 74th municipality okay unless until very small state normally each and every state will contain three levels village level intermediate level district level okay if you have any general doubts also please ask me students with respect to polity if you are struggling with any some basic concepts also you can ask so as this is going to be the very large topic from here onwards the core polity will start so I suggest you to maintain the polity notes in spiral maintain spiral notes so that in future whenever any updates will come you will add the page to that spiral and you can make the spiral notes into two halves also okay tomorrow onwards try to make spiral notes that will be easy it's going to be long standing Whichever the competitive exams you write, definitely polity will be there. Okay, group four level two, civil UPSC, CAPF, whichever the level it is, common subjects. Are we clear? Are you done with the notes? All of you. Very good. Next, now we will try to understand some common names of both Lok Sabha as well as Rajya Sabha. Parliament, Indian Parliament is always bicameral in nature. In this bicameral nature, one is Lok Sabha, the other one is the Rajya Sabha. Rajya Sabha. Okay. Some common names we use for Lok Sabha. Okay. Lok Sabha members are directly elected by the people. So can we call Lok Sabha is House of People. Yes, House of People. House of People. This is the first name. One more name is Lok Sabha. You know, friends, for example, so if you are living in any gated community or any apartment, generally they regularly they conduct elections. Isn't it? For every two years or every three years or every one year, they conduct elections. You might have watched the Ma elections also regarding the movie elections. So that means after a particular time, those elected people tenure will be finished and all the people again will be elected. In Lok Sabha also, the entire Lok Sabha, the Lok Sabha duration is 5 years. After 5 years again election will be conducted. Last time when the Lok Sabha elections was conducted? 2019. Next election will be 2024. Normal tenure I am talking about. Okay. Exception I will tell you, during the emergency time that 5 years can be extended one year at a time. If government wanted to go election before five years also, that can be possible. So normal duration of Lok Sabha is five years. So every five years Lok Sabha will be renewed. That means Lok Sabha is always considered as temporary house. Lok Sabha is always considered as temporary house. That means Lok Sabha vacant every five years. Next. Now in the present Lok Sabha, which party got the highest number of seats? BJP. BJP. Okay. That means, whichever the party gets highest number of seats, they form the government. That means, they will get more popularity. That is the reason Lok Sabha also known as 
पॉपुलर हाउस लोकसभा ऑल्सो नोन एज पॉपुलर हाउस दीज आर सम ऑफ द आल्टरनेटिव नेम्स ऑफ द लोकसभा पॉपुलर हाउस टेम्पररी हाउस एंड हाउस ऑफ द पीपल एक्चुअली वेन यू रेफर द इंडियन कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन नो वेर यू विल फाइंड द वर्ड लोकसभा यूल फाइंड ओनली द हाउस ऑफ पीपल हाउस ऑफ पीपल दिस द वर्ड वेरी फ्रीक्वेंटली यू विल फाइंड बिकॉज इट इज रिफ्लेक्टिंग द विल ऑफ द पीपल ओके नाउ राज्यसभा ओके राज्यसभा राज्यसभा Listen, students. Just we'll go back to the previous slides. You will get a better idea. Here, the Rajya Sabha members are elected by the people or elected by the MLAs. Yes. MLAs. MLAs are the representative in the village level or state level? State. state level. Can you say that when state level members are electing the Rajya Sabha members, can you say that Rajya Sabha is representing the states? Yes. Yes, sir. No. Yes. MLAs are representing the state level. These MLAs are electing the Rajya Sabha members. So that means. Rajya Sabha members are representing the people or states? States. State. state. That is the reason Rajya Sabha is also known as what is known as Council of State. This you have to understand very very important. Council of States. Council of States. That means obviously something is between the union and state. Union and state. The relation between the union and state is known as federal. federalism okay federalism is all about the relation between the union government and state government listen carefully union government and state government in parliament which house is dealing with the states lok sabha rajya sabha lok sabha rajya sabha rajya sabha is dealing with the states that means any issue related to federal matters any issue related to federal matters that has to be first started in lok sabha rajya sabha rajya sabha that is what i try to explain you that we will discuss in article 312 article 312 article 312 talks about creation of the new all india services new all india services what are the all india services at the moment now ias ips ifos indian forest service if you want to create one more all india service for example indian judiciary service or indian medical service these all these all india services are promoting the relation between the center and state that means they are related to federal matters that means that bill has to be first started in where rajya sabha that is the logic behind that when you are discussing about any federal matters which house got the highest priority rajya sabha anything related to people lok sabha that clarity you must know because in future classes we will discuss there are certain bills always starts in the rajya sabha those bills are generally related to federal matters are we clear about this next this is a temporary house that is a permanent house permanent house so what does the permanent house means here what do you mean permanent house permanent house means this house will not get vacant okay all the members at one at same at same time members will get vacant but the entire house will not get vacant at one go there means always members will be there the mechanism i will explain every two years one third members of the rajya sabha will get resign and elections will be held for every two years whoever elected they will be there for six years don't worry i will explain that so permanent house this is a popular house this is unpopular house then what lok sabha is a popular house rajya sabha must be what is other name of the rajya sabha house of elders house of elders house of elders why you call it never very good sneha right so why you call house of elders because elder people will be there obviously what is the minimum age for lok sabha tell me minimum age to vote Eighteen years. Okay, minimum is to contest in local election, local body election, contest in local government, like MPTC and all these things. What is the minimum age? MPTC, JPTC, Sarpanch, and all these things. How many years? Twenty-one years. Twenty-one years. Minimum age to contest MLA? Twenty-five. Minimum age to contest. Lok Sabha MP, 
How many years? Same age? Or two or three years more? Same age. That you have to remember. 25 years. Rajya Sabha? Why 10 years gap? 30 years. 30 years. Okay? Then, President. Is there any minimum age for President? Yes or no? Or they can contest at any age? Tell me. 35. These are the common, commonly occurs minimum ages. At least you should have an idea. So that you will never ever get confused. Okay? Very, very important. Generally, most of the time students will get overlap here. This is where most of the time students get stuck. Generally, students think that 18, 21, 25, that means this will be the 30 and this will be the 35. Students will do the mistake. Very, very important. Okay? Please write on this also. Now, guess what would be the minimum age to become Supreme Court judge out of this? No minimum age. Very, very important. There is no minimum age for Supreme Court judge. Maximum is there, 65 years. If you have maximum age to any post, there won't be minimum age. If you have minimum age for any post, there won't be any maximum age. That you have to understand. So, what is the maximum age to contest the president? Any, any age, 80 years, 85 years, democracy allows anyone. Whereas, maximum age is there for Supreme Court judge, 65 years. At that time, you have to retire. What is the minimum age? There is no minimum age that you have to understand. So now, the house of elders means obviously, in Rajya Sabha you will get elder people. Elder people means what? What elder people will bring? More experience. More experience bring what? More wisdom. More wisdom means what? If Lok Sabha do any mistakes, if Lok Sabha pass any bill with hasty manner, without thinking much, then Rajya Sabha has to okay, stop and Rajya Sabha should ensure that the bill should be thoroughly examined. But is it happening in reality? No. In Rajya Sabha also, people are not, the, it is not having the people with wisdom. In Rajya Sabha, people are just like acting like proxy of their political parties and Rajya Sabha is also losing its value. Otherwise, Rajya Sabha should reflect the wisdom of the members. But nowadays, Rajya Sabha is becoming like a political rehabilitation center. If someone is unable to contest, unable to win as a directly MP, they will become the Rajya Sabha MP. Unable to get a ticket or unable to become MLA, they will become the MLC. Don't you think it is happening? It is happening in the politics very frequently. Okay? Very important. Then, fine. So, these are some of the alternative names of the parliament, Lok Sabha. You know, students, the same applies in the state level also. Okay? State level assembly, house of people, temporary house, popular house. Council. Okay? Here you won't have a council of states because council is present in the state level. Council also known as permanent house. House of Elders. And here you have to understand one more thing, students. Lok Sabha also known as what? Lower House. Lok Sabha also known as Lower House. Whereas Rajya Sabha, Rajya Sabha is known as Upper House. Rajya Sabha is known as Upper House. Upper House. Okay? This also you have to understand. Write a note. Note. Government is always responsible to Lower House. Okay? Now tell me, students. In union level, union government is responsible to which house? Lok Sabha. State level, government is responsible to? State assembly. assembly. State assembly. Okay? They must be responsible to state assembly. In case, Lok Sabha in central level, they don't have any confidence in the central government, they will introduce a no confidence motion. State level also, no confidence motion. That you will get to know. That is comes under the definition of floor test. Floor test no confidence motion as well as the motion of confidence. Don't worry, you will get all this verbatim systematically. I will help you out. Are we clear so far? Yes. All of you. Okay. Now, next. No, 30 years. Upper house is 30 years. MLC is 30 years. You can write down here. MLC is 30 years. Okay. 30 years. Okay, students. As we were discussing about the parliament, now first we will deal with the Parliament functions. What the Parliament does? Parliament functions. Tell me, students, what the Parliament does? First thing is, they fight each other. Number one. 
parliament what are the parliament functions okay so parliament function is to entertain the people yeah number 1 making of laws making of laws making of laws which laws union laws or state laws union laws union laws state laws will be done by the state, state legislature legislature you have to tell because sometimes legislature contain only assembly sometimes it may contain the assembly as well as council always a proper word state laws will be done by the state legislature union laws will be done by the parliament okay this is a general one exceptional condition for example during the emergency or during the president rule at that time parliament will also make laws for the state don't go into that level now first try to understand this level making of laws next what is the other function of the parliament what controlling government okay that i uh, will explain very good the second most is discussions okay discussion on public important matters okay discussion discussion on public matters discussion on public matters now the opposition are demanding that manipur violence issue should be discussed under rule number 267 government is saying that no no we will discuss that under rule number 176 okay there both are having some difference of opinion 276 is where government will be more accountable whereas 176 is where government can easily escape out of okay so we'll discuss or we can go through the internet and do that as an assignment if you get any doubts ask me tomorrow class okay i mean monday class not tomorrow exactly okay discussion on public matters next what is the other important one what are the important other other things regarding the parliament parliament will amend the constitution constitution amendment constitution amendment constitution amendment constitution will be amended by constitution will be amended by parliament constitution amendment amendment of the constitution So far, how many times we amended the constitution? One hundred five, one hundred eight, one hundred three. Which one? One hundred five. One hundred five. Okay. One hundred five times we amended the constitution. Constitution amendment. Next. What are the other functions of the parliament? Other functions of the parliament. What? Obviously, budget. Okay. That means annual financial statement. annual financial statement annual financial statement approval annual financial statement approval okay annual financial statement it dealt by article 112 article 112 budget it approves the budget okay every year who introduces the budget lok sabha who introduces the budget president will lay the budget according to constitution okay all of you refer the article 112 if you have mobile also just refer 112 that i don't worry you can just open your mobile and just read out article 112 all of you mobile unte mobile check cheyandi mobile lo ayipothe vere wall check chesthaga wait cheyandi article 112 article 112 article 112 read out the verbatim first it is starting with what the that means that means annual financial statement is laying by who president. president generally this is where you will do the mistake you think that finance minister why because generally you lack of awareness on the constitution there you will do the very frequent mistakes in the indian polity comes from where is from this angle students knowledge the gap of knowledge what constitution says and what you will read in the lakshmi kant book there the matters differs there you will struggle a lot the question will ask according to constitution you will answer according to what you learn in the class that means what you learn in the class should be aligned with what constitution is talking about that means you have to bring the constitution along with you okay tomorrow we will go through the constitution i mean next class because after one hour we will adjourn the class again we will start the class on monday what do you mean adjourn postponement i'll explain that adjournment adjournment sanadai and all these things okay 
annual financial statement article 112. Next what are the other functions? Approval of emergencies, approval of emergencies, approval of emergencies, okay, emergencies. In part 18, we will talk about emergencies. Emergency must be approved by the parliament. If it is national emergency, within one month it has to be approved. If it is presidential, it has to be approved by both houses within two months. We will discuss that emergency. Next. Okay, come to that. Approval of ordinance. Approval of ordinance. Recently, you might have heard that students, Union government issued ordinance with respect to Delhi. Delhi ordinance. It is in news. It covered in the main headline. Ordinance. Which article deals with the ordinance? 123. 123. Easily, you can remember. Who issues the ordinance? Lok Sabha or Rajya Sabha? President will issue. President will issue. Okay, we will get that, do not worry. So, approval of president. Next, what the parliament will do? Parliament will involve, like she was saying, so election, election and removal, election and removal of, election and removal of president, president and vice president, election and removal of president and vice president. In that also parliament will involve. Okay. So, which members in the parliament will involve, we will discuss. That comes under the topic of electoral college of president election. Okay. Electoral college of president election. We will discuss that. And the electoral college of the vice president election also we will discuss. Next, what is the other function? Other function is quasi judicial. Quasi judicial function. That means what? Parliament can punish the members also. Parliament can punish. Parliament can remove someone if someone is not doing a duty. Okay? For example, if Supreme Court judge is misbehaving or mis Supreme Court judge incapacity, so who will remove them? Parliament will remove them. So Parliament will act as a quasi-judicial. Parliament will take action. Quasi-judicial means quasi means what? Semi. Quasi means what? Semi. Judiciary means what? Judiciary. Okay. Sometimes parliament will also act as a court, okay. but not as a, entirely as a court, but sometimes it will also access court, sometimes it will punish the people, okay. quasi-judicial function. Apart from this, apart from this, okay. apart from this, one more function is you know, like approval, approval of, approval of international agreements, approval of international treaties or international agreements, approval of international treaties or international agreements. For example, students, India signed on the COP21, Paris Climate Agreement, India signed. Okay? Initially, the first stage on any international agreement is signing on the agreement. Once we sign the agreement, we will introduce that agreement in the parliament. Once parliament approve that agreement, that is known as ratification. That is known as what? Ratification. So, whichever the agreement India signs, that can be ratified only when that agreement is approved by both Lok Sabha as well as Rajya Sabha. So, that is one more functioning of the parliament. Approval of international agreements. Are we clear about this? So, these are the various functions of the Indian parliament. Because as you are discussing about the parliament, you have to know what are the functions of the parliament. So, these are the more or less we covered all the functions of the Indian parliament. Okay? Are we clear? Finish the writing. Either house, it can be introduced in either house. Okay? So, at the end of the parliament, I will tell you the balance between the Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha. In which condition Lok Sabha is equal to Rajya Sabha, in which condition Lok Sabha is more powerful than the Rajya Sabha and vice versa. Rajya Sabha is more powerful than the Lok Sabha, in which condition? So, that you will get an idea. So, these international agreements, they can be placed in any house. Lok Sabha, Rajya Sabha. But if that international agreement is related to state list, something related to the state law, only assembly can make law. At that time, that agreement has to be placed in Rajya Sabha because Rajya Sabha is representing the Council of States. Okay? So, in next class, I will ask you to refer the state list, union list and concurrent list. You should be very perfect with that also. Okay? Are we clear? You know, students, in the beginning I told you, 
legislature is two types union legislature and state legislature union legislature makes laws which are applicable to entire india state laws are applicable to entire states for example okay and defense who will make the law union airports union okay shipping union. currency union. agriculture health environment forest first you have to understand that legislative subjects legislative subjects that means on which you can make a law legislative subjects legislative subjects can be divided into legislative subjects can be divided into three ways three ways okay number one union list union list and second one is the state list state list and third one is the concurrent list very regularly you have to refer these lists okay legislative subjects this is division okay this division into union list state list and concurrent list it is present in the schedule 7 of the indian constitution schedule 7 of the indian constitution under article 246 under article 246 schedule 7 article 246 actually this division this division first time first time this division was in montague chems for reforms what i mean central level only central level you are talking about diarchy diarchy we are not talking about diarchy we are talking about the list at that time they started with the union list and state list whereas in the government of india act 1935 they added the concurrent list also okay first time montague chems for reforms 1919 actually in 1919 so many incidents happened students in 1919 okay raulat satyagraha raulat satyagraha jallianwala bag jallian wala bag montague chems for reforms montague chems for reforms league of nations league of nations udra wilson league of nations khilafat movement very significant things 1919 all these are related to 1919 students okay of course they are covered under different different subjects okay league of nations will study in the ir international relations polity and history 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 and history okay so what you are studying history these days post mauryan guptas so you found gupta nidhi who wrote the allahabad inscription allahabad inscription harisena Who wrote Harisena? Okay, have you heard about that? Are we clear? Okay, Union list, State list, and Concurrent list. So frequently refer the Schedule Seven. Okay, just because now I asked you recently, just now, Agriculture. Most of you said both. No, Agriculture comes under only State list. Health comes under only State list. Environment, Wildlife, Environment, Wildlife comes under the Concurrent list. Education comes under the Concurrent list. so the kind of clarity you must have you can't by heart these things only very regularly you have to visit schedule 7 for example when you are reading the newspaper you come across the word education you have to refer the schedule 7 and you have to check who will make laws on the education okay some are very obvious for example currency who will make the laws on parliament very very thing very easy to understand what about the marriage divorce and those things who will make concurrent both concurrent okay so that area disaster management concurrent okay so that kind of clarity you must have so you will get that clarity by going through the schedule 7 very periodically you have to refer the schedule 7 are we clear yes. so now parliament will make laws on which areas union list as well as concurrent list 
okay state can make loss on which areas state list and concurrent list so concurrent list consists of subjects on which both parliament can make law as well as the state legislature also can make laws okay as long as they are not they are, those laws are not conflicting each other both are valid if those laws are conflicting each other then laws made by the parliament is valid over the laws made by the state legislature for example students when indian constitution was written at that time privacy was not there privacy is a new thing at that time gst was not there gst is new thing that means some new subjects are coming up which not mentioned in any of these three list any of these three list okay those new things are known as what residue okay so residuary powers residuary powers residue means which not mentioned in the any of these three list so residuary powers are vested with parliament residuary powers are vested with parliament only this you have to understand parliament only okay parliament they can make laws on the union list concurrent list residuary powers and concurrent list concurrent list state legislature state legislature they can make on the concurrent list and they can also make laws on the state list here the common thing is concurrent list concurrent list that means on concurrent list both center as well as state can make laws whereas these are exclusively related to parliament this is exclusively related to states i will clear this clarity you must have so that you can easily answer the questions so where is the rest of the students they don't come regularly online offline here and there okay so try to come offline it is better you can easily interact online sometimes internet connectivity will lost and the doubts may not be cleared immediately a lot of issues if if you are in town if you are able to come offline always choose offline never ever prefer online unless until you are in living in some other continent or something like that okay it adds some systematicness also because you will get ready and you will take some action otherwise in hostel just simply sitting in couch and sleeping watching that won't give the learning mode okay clear yes sir. next we'll see so parliament parliament means what who includes in the parliament lok sabha rajya sabha president and governor president what about the vice president parliament includes also vice president so simple my question is does the parliament includes vice president yes sir no yes. no president includes only three elements okay sorry parliament includes only three elements parliament if someone will ask you parliament means it includes only three elements lok sabha and rajya sabha and president president this is the definition of parliament lok sabha rajya sabha and president where is this definition present is present in where article 70 9 article 79 speaks that parliament is nothing but lok sabha rajya sabha and president so in parliament topic what are the main focused areas first we'll study about the members okay lok sabha and rajya sabha this we can divide into two ways okay that is first we'll study about the members then we'll study about the house all together how the house will function okay when we are studying about the members we will study about the qualification of the members qualifications 
what are the qualifications of members we will study. Then we will study about the disqualification of members, how the members will get disqualified, disqualification of members and we will also study about the oath of members, who will take the oath of the members and the, how the members will take oath and some of the special rights related to members also we will discuss, they are known as privileges, privileges related to members, we will discuss all these things related to members, related to house, okay, related to house, regarding the house, first we will discuss about who will preside the house, presiding officers, presiding officers, presiding officers, then we will discuss about the functioning of the house, sessions, we will discuss about the sessions, functioning of the house and we will also discuss about various instruments used in the house, instruments such as question hour, zero hour, okay, no confidence motion, substantive motion, various steps ensure motion, calling attention motion, okay, this kind of different motions we will discuss that related to house. We will also discuss about house related thing, quorum, because minimum strength has to be maintained, maintain, then only the house will function. And with respect to house, we will also discuss about the whip. And not only the members, even the house also will enjoy certain privilege, house together. This is how you will learn in the parliament, okay. This kind of clarity you must have. So, you will get an idea what you are going to learn in the future classes. You will focus on the members. Once the members thinks is done, then we will focus the house as all together. Then in the parliament, we will also discuss about the president also, okay. With respect to president, with respect to president, we will discuss about president assented to bills, president accepting the bills that we will discuss and we will also discuss about ordinance, ordinance in which condition president will issue the ordinance and all these things, okay. And we will also discuss about the president, president powers related to parliament, president powers related to parliament. That means for example, president will summon the house or president will address both the houses together, those kind of things. Okay, these are the three areas, president assent to bills. It means president accepting the bills, it covered by article triple one. Ordinance as you mentioned, it covered under article 123. So, these areas we will focus. So, once these areas are done, once these areas are done, then obviously this entire together is known as what? Legislature. Parliament is this. Legislature is more, means what? Lok Sabha, Rajya Sabha together known as legislature. Then we have to discuss about how this union legislature, how the union legislature, union legislature control the union executive, union executive that also we have to discuss. How the parliament will control the government, how the parliament will control the government, okay. This one it will be covered in the instruments like question number by asking the questions by introducing the no confidence motion, that means we do not have confidence on the government. In this way, legislature will control the executive, that we will discuss. So, this is the summary of what you are going to learn in the future classes, okay. So, in the future classes, you are going to discuss about members, their qualification, disqualification, who will take their oath and if members rights are violated, okay who will take the action, what kind of special rights will enjoy MPs. Then we will discuss about house as together, who will regulate the house presiding officer and then we will discuss about the what kind of privilege enjoyed by the house and if someone is not following the house rules, then whip will be issued. Then certain members has to be there that is known as quorum and house will be assembled in different sessions. Now, monsoon session of the parliament is going on, okay. So, according to constitution, 
So at least how many sessions in an year must be there? Three. So constitution not mentioned. First thing is constitution did not mention about number of session. Constitution only mentioned that the gap between the two sessions should not be more than six months. As long as that is fulfilled, you can have any number of the session. That clarity you must have. Okay? Always you should be very clear with the constitution. Number of sessions we will discuss and the different types of instruments. Zero over and all these things. Then we will discuss about the president and president in relation to parliament. President in relation to parliament. Here we will discuss about the protem speaker. Okay? Protem speaker and how the president will interact with the parliament. Taking the oath of the members and all these things. And finally, how the legislature will control the executive. Because what is the main feature of the parliament, parliamentary form of government? The main feature of the parliamentary form of government is executive will be controlled by the legislature. You know the students, governments are two types, parliamentary form, presidential form. Okay? Let's write down this. Let's checks and balances. What about the composition? Here we will discuss the composition in the house. House composition here. Okay. We will discuss about the composition of the house composition of the house and we will discuss the duration of the house duration of the house just a given an outline how this parliament topic structure i am giving okay we will discuss lot of subheadings delimitation we will discuss that is also comes under the house done don't worry students if you don't know some of these words you will get to know just it's an overview of the indian parliament what areas we are going to touch upon? Recently, Rahul Gandhi disqualification. It was in news. Article 102. Article 102, class 1. Subclass E. It talks about disqualification done by the parliament law. That is Representation of People Act 1950. 51. We will discuss about that. This is about parliament overview. Like I said earlier, just now, governments are two types. Okay. Governments are two types. Parliamentary form of government, parliamentary form. Parliamentary form of government. And second one is the presidential form of government. Presidential form of government. Parliamentary form and presidential form of government. So, listen, guys, the main difference between these two types of government is in parliamentary form of government, in parliamentary form of government, executive, executive derives from legislature, derives from legislature, executive derives from legislature, and executive. Responsible to legislature. Responsible to legislature. Responsible to legislature. Okay. So, in parliamentary form of government, one more feature is, one more feature is regarding the power. Regarding the power, real head is the prime minister, whereas the nominal head nominal head nominal head is president what is the difference between the real head and nominal head decisions real heads the one with heads <laughs> okay so generally in most of the families you will see okay in most of the families for namesake generally i mean some families i cannot say most some families normally the head of the family will consider as father but the real decision will be taken by the mother. Okay, nominal head. For example, if someone giving the any marriage invitation, something like the name will be the father one, nominal one, figurative head sometimes. Whereas the actual decisions will be controlled by the mother. That is known as parliamentary form of government. Are we clear? Do you understand? Yes. Okay. Whereas presidential form of government here, okay, executive, executive, not derived from legislature not derived from legislature 
not derived from legislature executive and here executive not responsible to legislature not responsible to legislature not responsible to legislature and here the power the power is real head who is the real head of the government here president, president obviously because we are calling it as a presidential form of government president okay now tell me in india which form of government we are following parliamentary, parliamentary form of government because in india who is the real head prime minister nominal head is the president okay nominal head is the president in india whereas the presidential form of government example the usa if you know that india is following the parliamentary form of government with that kind of understanding you have to understand this parliament topic because government is always controlled by the parliament here government means executive parliament means legislature that means executive always derived from the legislature that means in india executive is always de derived from the legislature okay so i had general doubt that why dr ambedkar is referred as father of constitution okay generally you know friends i'll also tell the answer in generally because the doubt is general doubt so ambedkar when you are writing constitution constitution is not referred not written by one person first myth you have to get cleared is constitution is written by okay our constitution is debated by group of people known as constituent assembly constituent assembly the strength of the constituent assembly was 299 299 constituent assembly in that constituent assembly the members they organized themselves into different different committees one such committee was drafting committee so drafting committee main responsibility is to draft the constitution okay to compose the constitution as the chairman of the drafting committee was b r ambedkar okay that is one reason why you are consider ambedkar as the father of constitution not only he was chairman of drafting committee while the constitution debates are going on also he played a very important role okay that is the reason we consider ambedkar as the father of constitution because in constitution all the 219 members role was there either one way or another for example sardar vallabhbhai patel he acted as a chairman of the committee on fundamental rights and committee on the central state relations steering committee chairman by rajendra prasad okay so in that way different persons eminent persons they played very important role but still we are considering b r ambedkar as father of constitution because of various reasons number one because he played very crucial role in constitution debates second one he was the architect of the constitution by acting as a chairman of the drafting committee that is the reason okay so constitution was not just written by one person generally this kind of misconception we have before we start the polity we think that ambedkar wrote the constitution it's not like that constituent assembly played important role in the writing of constitution ambedkar was chairman of one of the committee in the constitution drafting committee are we clear yes. so this is about the parliamentary form presidential form now next we go to the explanation which supports these statements like executive is derived from legislature and executive is responsible to legislature we try to support that statements by taking further explanation we started that in india state is consist of three elements okay so we are not discussing about judiciary let it be said because judiciary separated from the executive according to article 50 of the indian constitution separation of judiciary from executive we are not discussing that okay now executive executive mainly what they do with Implementation. implementation of laws for example nirbhaya act is there that means a law nirbhaya act is made by which we, which of the organ legislature. legislature 
Now the Nirbhaya Act is implemented by implemented by whom? I mean, executive is a general word. In reality, who will implement? Bureaucrats. Okay. Can you can you agree that every bureaucrat will work under one minister? Yes, sir. No? Every bureaucrat, whichever the bureaucrat, you can give an example. ISR, IPSR, whichever the bureaucrat, don't you think they work under one department and one minister? Yes, sir. No. That means executive. Executive again, you can divide it into two ways. Okay, temporary executive and the permanent executive. Temporary executive and permanent executive. Okay, out of these ministers and government officials, who is the temporary executive? Ministers. Ministers, because ministers will come and go, but government officer is stays always. Not exactly, they will also transfer. But doesn't mean that they will be removed from the service. Temporary means ministers. Temporary means ministers. Ministers, permanent obviously, government officials, bureaucrats, government officials. Now in Andhra Pradesh, there is an issue going on regarding the volunteers. Now volunteers comes under the temporary executive or permanent executive. So broadly, we can fit in the permanent executive, but of course they are not on the government payroll. Okay, temporary executive means only ministers. Okay, now. Come to this topic. So, whenever in the Indian polity we are referring the executive means, remember, whenever I say that executive is responsible to legislature, always I meant that temporary executive. Okay? Here we are not discussing about the permanent executive, we are not discussing about the government official. So, whenever, okay, Sneha. So, whenever I say that executive is responsible to legislature means Ministers are responsible to legislature. Do you understand this? That means here, from here onwards, I refer executive equivalent to ministers. So this consciousness you have to have. Otherwise, again, every whenever you come across the, the constitution or a polity, whichever one, you will get confused. Government official or ministers. This clarity you must have. Now, in the previous statement, I told you that executive is derived from the legislature and executive is responsible to the legislature. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Now, we'll see. Are you clear with this? Take, okay. Lok Sabha. Rajya Sabha. Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha. These are the two houses. You know, students, in Lok Sabha, whichever the party gets high number of seats, that party is known as ruling party. Other parties are known as opposition parties. Okay? In 2019 Lok Sabha elections, BJP got the highest number of seats. So, the shaded portion is the BJP MPs. Okay? And the BJP also having the Rajya Sabha MPs also. How the Rajya Sabha MPs will be elected? MLAs. In state level, BJP is having some MLAs. They are electing the BJP Rajya Sabha MPs. So, this shaded portion, this shaded portion is nothing but MPs. MPs belong to the ruling party. MPs belong to the ruling party. Now tell me, friends, minister. Ministers will come from ruling party or from opposition parties also? Ruling party. Simply take an example in state level. In your state level, Ministers are coming from where? Ruling party or opposition party? Ruling party. Ruling party, ruling party members themselves will not get the chance. Forget about the opposition party members. Isn't it? That means, here what I am trying to say is, out of all these MPs, few will become the ministers. Agree all of you? Yes, sir. Few will become the ministers. Who are those few people? Whoever having more criminal backgrounds. <laughs> Whoever having more money are more caste, who are very close with the Prime Minister, they will become the ministers. Like, you know, if you have a squad of 15 members, okay, 11 members will play the team. Whoever will be very close to captain, whoever will have some 
you know like managing certain things it is not always like that but example i am giving the same way few people will become the ministers are we clear now out of these ministers there are certain more okay the most important ministers okay most important ministers they are known as cabinet ministers most important ministers they are known as cabinet ministers okay actually these basics must be covered in your basics class okay i am not sure that is the reason i am repeating this cabinet who will lead this cabinet prime minister prime minister now by looking at this diagram can you say that if you close this side of circle can you say that prime minister can be the member of rajya sabha are you understanding my question can you say that prime minister can be from member of rajya sabha minister can be member of rajya sabha that means from this diagram you must able to tell that executive is deriving from the legislature executive is nothing but what ministers just now i told you executive is nothing but what ministers ministers are coming from where legislature can you say that executive is deriving from legislature yes or no yes, yes. when executive is deriving from legislature that executive must be answerable to legislature particular to which house house of people house of people that is what we will refer in the article 75 clause 3 where council of ministers are collectively responsible to the house of people so now do you understand the statements india follow the parliamentary form of government here executive is deriving from legislature executive means ministers they are deriving from where legislature they are responsible to which house legislature in general but in particular which house lok sabha okay that responsibility can be ensured through various ways calling attention motion question hour no comments motion various ways first draw this one you have to have very clarity about this kind of basic students then only you will understand the subject with ease okay always remember a minister must be a member of either the lok sabha or rajya sabha in exceptional condition without having a membership also a person will be appointed as minister listen carefully all of you generally minister must be lok sabha member or rajya sabha member sometimes a minister will be appointed without having a membership in lok sabha rajya sabha also but within 6 months the person should have a membership either in the lok sabha or in the rajya sabha article 75 class 5 we we'll discuss that but in generally remember ministers must have the membership either in the lok sabha or assembly are you understanding students yes sir very good hmm different important schedules difference what is the difference obviously spelling difference is there first thing i will see i will clear about this okay very good what are you are saying parts of shastra can parts of position also it means okay first okay very quickly i will mention if you take a textbook okay as soon as you open the textbook what you will see your name first one is preface preface unta the kadandi context preface as soon as you open the constitution also you will find same kind of thing that is known as preamble preamble is the overall gist of the constitution next entire textbook divided into different different chapters for easy understanding easy understanding in the same way entire constitution divided into different different chapters that is known as parts that is known as parts okay sometimes in a particular chapter if more factual information is there more factual information is there that will be in the form of the table format tables glossary glossary tables you will find in the textbook in the same way in constitution also if you find more factual information that will be in the form of the table that is known as what schedule that is known as what schedule table information okay and the entire textbook divided into chapters each chapter will contain number of paragraphs each chapter will contain number of paragraphs okay constitution also each part will contain number of paragraphs but here these paragraphs are numbered paragraphs these numbered paragraphs are nothing but what article okay articles in any article in any article 
if it contain more factual information that factual information of that article will be presented in the schedule so every article okay sorry every schedule is must link with the article without schedule article can survive but without article schedule cannot survive very very important are we clear how done with this writing if not finish this so how can you say that preamble enacted after the enactment of the constitution obviously first you will write the you know like when you are writing the answer first you will write the conclusion or you will write the answer and conclusion first first you will write the answer then conclusion so when you are writing the constitution also first you will write the summary or constitution first you will write the constitution then you will write the summary that is nothing but what preamble are we clear okay very good okay so preamble enacted on the 26th november 1949 so yeah did you understand very good so monday nunchi kodi online raadu and try sorry offline raadu and try cheyandi varsha padutunnayi kada intlo undam and try cheyakunda try to come offline so that you can ask more number of doubts and i can help you out and the class will be very vibrant okay class dalu undu ankonde cheppe valla kuda ila gidge padam ekku anipistadi it's all about class is a mirror it reflects the faculty of course faculty also reflects the class nene cheppaled ankonde meer kuda raru adu vere vishayam it's vice versa relation okay so monday onwards try to attend the offline class online students also okay are we clear so your doubts are you clear with this doubts the extension of the article is nothing but what schedule so without schedule article can survive but without article schedule cannot survive that means every schedule must be linked with one article just now i told you seventh schedule is linked with which article article 246 just now i told you okay here one more thing also you have to understand students that is this is an example article 242 243 244 article 243a 243b 243c article 244 okay article 245 here okay listen are asked two questions number of articles number of articles tell me students in column a column a if i ask you number of articles in column a how many number of articles look carefully and tell me how many number of articles three only very good okay numbered articles how many numbered articles how many numbered articles three three very good okay here how many number of articles ipudu jara tha kalasin cheppandi mer kalesha movie chusara చేయి చూపెట్టిన తర్వాత ఇది ఏంటి అని అడుగుతారు కదా సో టైప్ హా మెనీ నెంబర్ ఆఫ్ ఆర్టికల్స్ ఇయర్ ఫోర్ నెంబర్ ఆఫ్ ఆర్టికల్స్ అంటే అన్ని కౌంట్ చేస్తే వచ్చేది నెంబర్ ఆఫ్ ఆర్టికల్స్ హా మెనీ నెంబర్డ్ ఆర్టికల్స్ హా మెనీ డిఫరెంట్ నెంబర్స్ యూ ఆర్ సీయింగ్ టూ విత్ దిస్ ఎగ్జాంపుల్ యూ విల్ అండర్స్టాండ్ ఫర్ ఎవర్ ద డిఫరెన్స్ బిట్వీన్ ద నెంబర్ ఆఫ్ ఆర్టికల్స్ అండ్ నెంబర్డ్ ఆర్టికల్స్ ఆర్ వి క్లియర్ అబౌట్ దిస్ బికాస్ వెరీ ఫ్రీక్వెంట్లీ యూ విల్ కమ్ అక్రాస్ దట్ total number of articles in the indian constitution 465 total numbered articles are 395 only that is where the biggest confusion will arise okay which one is what which one is what are we clear about this this is the difference between the number of articles as well as numbered articles clear now with the writing finish okay so when we implemented the indian constitution very good present okay and 
at that time number of articles and number of articles are same 395. Now the number of articles are 465. Sometimes here and there one two clauses if you added for example article 15 6 article 16 6 you added it will go 467 okay do not worry about that number but just for your clarity I am talking about numbered articles numbered articles how many numbered articles 395 that means in whichever the case you cannot find article 396 in the Indian constitution but if you count all together it will go more than 400 because so many articles they are containing sub clause article 243 a article 21 a okay any article followed with the capital alphabet that means that is a separate article okay that is not sub part very very important okay any article followed with capital letter that means that is a separate article when you are counting the number of articles if you count like that it will go beyond 450 but different numbers how many different numbers you will see 395 only at that time number of schedules are 8 now the number of schedules are 12 12 okay and parts at that time number of parts 22 numbered parts numbered parts also 22 numbered parts also 22 now now number of parts how many number of parts now 25 numbered parts numbered parts up to which number you will find 22 that you have to understand this basics you have to understand students otherwise lot of confusion will come part 22 only you will see in the Indian constitution you do not find part 23 what than 4 9a 9b if you count all that it will come 25 because 9 contain 9a 9b okay 14 also 14 also 14a so that if you count all together 25 but up to which number you will find up to 22 only that we added tribunal yeah tribunals 42nd amendment you should ask number are numbered so if they do not give then numbered articles 395 yes you should ask that someone whether they are asking number of articles and numbered articles clear very good okay i will revise quickly whatever we discussed in today's class Okay, students. In today's class, we started with the topic of Indian Parliament. Indian Parliament is nothing but Union Legislature. Article 79 to 122 deals with the Indian Parliament. State consists of three elements: Legislature, Executive, and Judiciary. And tomorrow class, you have to bring the Constitution. That is also revision. Okay. Next, Legislature, Union, and State. Union Legislature make laws in the central level. State in the state level. Okay. Next, legislature, bicameral, unicameral. Bicameral means two houses, unicameral means one house. Parliament is always bicameral in nature, Lok Sabha, Rajya Sabha. State may be bicameral or unicameral, it depends on the state. Six states in India following the bicameral. If the state is containing the bicameral, assembly and council will be there. If it is unicameral, only assembly will be there. That means assembly is mandatory, council is optional. Then elected representative at different level, I told you. Lok Sabha MPs are always elected by the people, Rajya Sabha MPs are elected by the MLAs. There is a reason Rajya Sabha is also known as Council of States, whereas Lok Sabha is directly House of People. So, Lok Sabha is more powerful than the Rajya Sabha because Lok Sabha members are directly elected by the people. State level MLAs are directly elected by the people, MLCs are elected by specific groups. Okay? We will discuss it appropriately. Then, different names of the parliament, I mean different names of Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha in the parliament. Government always responsible to the lower house central level or state level whichever level it may be lower house central level lower house is the Lok Sabha state level lower house is the assembly then minimum ages at various levels we discussed then the functions of parliament also we covered we should have add one more function here that is controlling of the government in the next slide I, I mentioned executive will be controlled by legislature through question hour zero and all these things controlling of the government that also you can add here next 
Legislative subjects can be divided into three ways, union, state list and concurrent list. The exclusive control over the union list and residuary powers parliament. State list is the state legislature. On concurrent list, both union as well as state can make laws. If they are aligned with each other, that's okay. If they are confronting to each other, laws made by the parliament will prevail over the laws made by the states. Then we discussed about what are the areas we are going to touch upon in the Indian parliament. Okay, members, house and related to president and how the executive is controlled by the legislature also we will discuss. Then governments are two types, parliamentary and presidential form of government. Then I explained about different types of executive and I explained about how the executive is deriving, deriving from the legislature. A minister must be member from either of the house. Even though if he is not having the membership, he must get the membership within the six months of taking the oath. Otherwise, he will be disqualified. Then I explained about the difference between the schedule, part and preamble. And I explained about number of parts, number of so numbered parts and numbered articles and number of articles. Are we clear? Yes. Yes, we are done with the class. Thank you.